Mathai from the Citizens Action Group, Nalachandi, the head of Montreal Computer, Pradeep Kaur, and playwright director Mahesh Dattani. Good evening and welcome to BBC World. This is Question Time India and a very special edition because this time, this week, we come to you from the beautiful city of Bangalore, the Garden City. And we're here at the Indian Institute of Science at the JN Tata Auditorium where we've got 270 people and it is a beautiful auditorium here. I call Bangalore a beautiful garden city, but many of its citizens are worried, worried that their city is being destroyed gradually. And they're here to ask questions on what's happening to Bangalore. This is part of our general series in which we're discussing civic issues and civic problems in cities around the country. On our panel tonight, the man in the government who you could say is responsible for this city of Bangalore, the principal secretary of urban development, Philippos Matthew, Mathai. The buck stops at him. And I believe he's brought his crash helmet along with him. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Next, Naumita Chandi, one of the most active citizens in the city of Bangalore, fighting to keep the city from going downhill. She's part of the Citizens Action Group, a very active group in this city. And next to Naumita is the kind of person that New India is proud of, one of the computer and information technology kings of the country, Pradeep Kaur, head of Microland and better known or well known as the Bill Gates of India. And then, there is Mahesh Natani, playwright, author, producer, director uh, of several successful productions uh, that have toured the entire country. This year, Mahesh won the Sahitya Academy Award for his book, Final Solutions and Other Plays. Thank you all very much for being with us tonight. Thank you very much. Well, let's, uh, let's move to our first question. It's from a scientist. Uh, that's very appropriate. Mr. Venu Gopalan. Uh, yes, sir, you have a question, sir. Bangalore was built as India's boom city in the mid-80s. Subsequently, with every amenity in the city overstretched and unable to cope with the growing demands of a metropolitan city, what can we do to prevent this boom from going bust? Before I ask the panel, actually, let me take, uh, ask you, do you see it going downhill over the last 10 years, Bangalore? Yes, I have seen the growth and decay of Bangalore. I have been here for the past 40 years. And you've seen it becoming a boom city and then yes. tending towards... Garden city is becoming a garbage city and pollution level is very high. Garden city becoming a garbage city. <laughs> well, I will not fully agree with you on that point because uh, one tries to compare First of all, Bangalore is still a garden city when compared to all the other metropolitan cities of India. But we look back, it's, there is a human tendency to always think in terms of the uh, golden past. There was a time when even when I came to Bangalore first, it was a very small place. It was just an overgrown, beautiful, peaceful town. And, uh, and you've been in Karnataka 33 years. Yes, right. I've been here for more than three decades, uh, all of us know, actually the gentleman used the word, the boom, yes. The boom caught a snapping because between the 70s and 80s, the type of tremendous growth which occurred in Bangalore was something which was unprecedented for which we have been unprepared. That's the reason. The boom has been the reason for today's condition. And if you this ask... condition you're saying though is not garbage. There is garbage. I agree with you. There is garbage. There is garbage. In but fact... Both garbage and gardens. <laughs> yes. I will not even say that it's a healthy mix of both. But there is a mix of both. The city is still a garden city. It has got uh, bad areas. I know that there are days the garbage is not removed properly. But efforts are being made by the city corporation to see that the solid waste management is taken on a better footing and things are removed and we find uh, places to dump the garbage, move it better than what is happening. Okay, the gentleman on the, in the fourth row on the left there, I'll just, 
uh, just I've just come to you after a question from the on the fourth row in the white shirt at the uh, yeah yeah. Why is the garbage disposal not privatized? There are about 280 health wards of uh, Bangalore City Corporation. Now that almost half are privatized. Uh, you know, privatization unfortunately, fortunately, has been becoming a very easy mantra before us. You and mean the government has messed up privatization also? Oh uh, well, the, the, maybe so. I will not say total. I mean that <laughs> after all, all of us, all of you are part of the government. In fact, all of us then mess, mess it together. Uh, but it has been a healthy experience. Part of it is privatized, and we tender it out. The tendering is going on now again for the after completing the the. Now, session. Let me ask you this: general feeling of Garden City becoming garbage city has been. Is that an exaggeration, or is that a genuine fear? No, it's not at all an exaggeration. Uh, I actually followed a garbage truck around to see where they were dumping this garbage. Uh, this garbage truck took off from Victoria Hospital. They dumped the garbage on all the peripheral roads of Bangalore. Uh, to my total and utter shock, I discovered that we actually have no garbage dumping sites. The government has been talking for a long time. They've uh, identified nine sites. But they what moved. Is, so is one of the sites the MLA hostel where they want to dump? No. <laughs> well, I thought we should take it to the corporation building maybe and dump Use it that. all there. <laughs> Uh, you may get some reaction then. If you can look at this photograph maybe. These are street children picking up disposable needles from a government hospital. Recycled, you and I are using these again. That's the state of our garbage. All, and all, also hospital waste. There is no hospital waste management worth its name. We filed a public interest litigation. There has been an order. I hope things are going to move now. Okay, just to take you up on that, what would you like to see, what constructive steps would you like to see done? Well, for one thing, there are two units already recycling uh, garbage to make compost. They're running not even at half strength. We need more composting units. We need proper dumping sites. We need incinerators outside of the city. Uh, we need proper uh, garbage disposal. Now it's left to citizens and citizens groups and uh, localities. They segregate their garbage. They, uh, but where does it all go? It goes back in the same pile all over again. So why segregate it? Uh, Pradeep Kaur, we're talking about garbage, and uh, Mr. Mathai says we were caught napping. We're still caught napping, apparently. No, let me give you some facts. Uh, Ten some years facts. of napping is a long time. Right? No, I agree <laughs> with you. Let me tell you, tell you of some facts which maybe validate some of these issue, issues. If you look at the number of vacancies of sweepers in the Bangalore City Corporation is 1,200. So Bangalore City Corporation has a f vacancy of sweepers, which is 1,200. They also have a requirement of additional 4,000 that they need to hire. Having said that, while the fact of the matter is that the, the, the state government has not been able to privatize the garbage city collection, the first time, the unions are very powerful. For the first time, I think the first uh, tender is out. The state has been, the, the city has been divided into 17 and health districts or health wards. And let's hope they, are, they, you know, they actually award this. And in my mind, that gives you a reflection of where we are. Mr. Mathai, in fact, uh, Hyderabad has got a team from Singapore to come and, pri and clean the city, and it's working brilliantly there. You say you privatize, but it's not having any impact. So obviously, even that has not been properly done. I'm not very sure. I mean, I, I didn't really say that it is not running private. It's properly. It's partly, it has been privatized. And the tendering has occurred now, actually the re-tendering, because uh, well, a lot of people come and offer their things and we, we tender. The tendering has been floated now. Uh, knows about it. Now, Nomita mentioned about uh, the dumping grounds. Dumping grounds, of course, the Nyan uh, dumping areas mentioned have been identified earlier. What happens is quite a lot of pe places, by the time you move in, I mean, that's what the experience has been, it again gets inhabited. It's very difficult to get them back. But now, uh, last week, nearly 120 acres have been identified. It will be put to use immediately. Right. Let's take the lady at the, on the right at the back there in the sari. Yes, ma'am, on this issue, you have a question. Yeah. Uh, I have been watching the way the layouts are maintained and the garbage is cleared and so on, you know, in a pretty keen way. And what happens is that I think lump sums are given to people and then they just come and do it sporadically, like take away garbage twice a week or uh, come and diesel the drains once a year or something like that. And everything comes back in no time. 
So uh, I would like to ask Mr. Secretary, uh, is there any way you can give the money to the residents association? See, even if you gave a lakh of rupees, we would be able to employ three people on a daily basis the whole year round and look after the maintenance ourselves. Nobody can be more interested in our surroundings than us. That's a good point. Why don't you decentralize? Yeah. No, decentralization very much on the card. And um, of course, I, I don't think there will be any uh, problem in giving certain funds to the NGOs. This has been done, but not on a uh, widespread basis. We're not asking for large amounts, sir. Just, just you know, if you, you know, gave one lakh to the contractor, we can use that the whole year round. I, 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 and I, I would like to address the same question to Mr. Pradeep Kaur also. Actually, let me bring Anyone in Mahesh at this point. Us. Just a second, let me bring in Mahesh at this point. It seems to me that this is a real worry, garbage and the state of the city. It seems to me, though, that the citizens of Bangalore, the short time that I've been here, seem to be much more concerned and the government, is this, how real is this, that citizens need to take things into their own hands now? Yes, I think that's the only way any action is really taken, because it takes a citizen's protest for something to happen. And sometimes it doesn't happen even with a great deal of protest. Carbon Park being the perfect example, it was only when the citizens were militant about saving the park that people took notice and... Uh, uh, did not go ahead with plans to build their uh, public yes, offices yes. Pradeep, there. Why is this the impression that the government is always trying to break the rules, encroach on green areas, you know, bend the rules a bit so that they can build a little hostel here or take a little bit of the garden away there or build a road through some green area while the citizens are fighting it? It's, it's most unusual in Bangalore. No, I agree. You know, let me also supplement with, with what I said. You know, one the fact that while the government has an interest to privatize, it's not happened. They have had an effort earlier. It got shot down because the union of the garbage collectors, whatever we call it, is extremely powerful. Let me give you some more facts to validate some of these elements. The city of Bangalore produces 25% of what is called uh, hazardous waste management, city of Bangalore. This is, you know, leather tendering units, chemical units, textile units, dyes, etc., etc. And I guess some of the hospital waste which Namita yeah, was talking about. And if you go back further, you know, a fundamental element is that the city has identified, in my mind, which I remember right, nine garbage disposable areas, five of which are non-fit for use today. That's Why is that? By last government. You've d that's, that's a fact of life. I can, I can talk to you statistics of where the facts are, and then you say that if you, know, you have vacancies of sweepers, which is 5,200, which don't exist, you, have, you are making an effort of privatization, which does not happen, you have identified disposable areas where you put garbage, which is, you know, five out of nine are unfit for use. What do the citizens and the large garbage creators of hotels and hospitals do? Where do they go? They go to the railway beds. They go to the, you know, lake beds. They and go to all those places there. Around the airport. What do they do? At Bangalore airport, think about it. They about take, the, the, they take the garbage from the middle of the city and put and it near the airport. all around the periphery of the airport as well. Yes, quite so What right. do you do? But, uh, so, okay, that's the question. What, let's talk, ask the panel, what would you like to see done, on the garbage issue at least? It's obviously a major issue here. I think two elements, if I, if I, if I have to respond. Uh, first, certainly the government must make it, make it a priority to find places where garbage can be dumped in a manner which does not contaminate the local area. Okay. Which is nice. That which shouldn't is, take too long. It shouldn't too long. In it's a political will in my mind, yeah. Second is like make that aware. Let people know. Look, in your locality, you can you know you can go and put the garbage in a particular area. No one in his right mind wants to you know put garbage on the road if he knows where to go about it. Yeah. So and if you create provide a, the facilities, people will yeah, actually absolutely. use them. Absolutely. Let's move on to another question from a uh, tax lawyer, Mr. S. P. S. Uh, Ranjan on the right side. Yes, software sir. capital of India. Sorry, sir. Could you say Bangalore, yeah. which was once upon a time known to be the software capital of India and also the Silicon Valley of India, is no more with all the people moving over to Hyderabad, where Mr. Naidu is offering all kinds of concession and tax shops and so and other infrastructure and other facilities. Now, would the government do something to get back these people into this state again and put back Bangalore into the software map of India? Well, this is obviously first uh, directed right into your court. Is this worrying you, that people are not finding Bangalore as attractive as a Silicon Valley as they used to? No, first, you know, being an engineer by profession, let me tell you some facts. I don't think that's true. It's not for one fundamental reason. Total amount of software exports from Hyderabad last year was 250 crores. From Bangalore, 2,000 crores. Uh, from, from a number of facts. Second, on an average, 50% of all new companies formed in the information technology area are coming to Bangalore today. 
third is that you know while the government wi government will is a very key element there are multiple elements that go in before companies make decisions to uh, to you know relocate first certainly is the climate it's you know availability of skilled manpower bangalore historically is known for technology manpower we have 42 state and public institutions of r&d we have Indian Institute of Science, we have some 71 engineering colleges, we produce 6,000 uh, engineers, etc., etc. But you but know, these people are also very mobile. They can go to any city, but let me they don't have to stay here. No, the other you elements... Know, one, just, although you mentioned these statistics, which are impressive, Microsoft has decided to choose Hyderabad, and that's a big decision. Is it a fact that your 2,000 crores is an indicator of a past stock, and the real growth now is taking place in other cities. No, I don't see. I don't think so. And I'll tell you why I don't think so. Why would Microsoft choose Hyderabad? Well, I, I, I don't have an answer for that, but let, maybe. Yeah, maybe you have an answer. First of all, I think we should not really get worried whether Hyderabad develops in the software area or uh, Chennai develops. In fact, I would, uh, one should be able to look at it from the country's perspective, and it should be a golden triangle of between Chennai, Hyderabad, and Bangalore. And this statement, as my colleague said, is not correct that uh, Hyderabad is scoring over uh, Karnataka, Bangalore. Uh, well, it, it's just an accident because uh, he, he chose, uh, Microsoft cho chose uh, Hyderabad, he could have chosen Bangalore, that's all. I don't think there was just any... Just an accident? People I don't make these no? decisions based on no? accidents? No, no. I have to no. buy that one, no? I don't think. No, no. <laughs> Fine. You mean he took a map and just sort of pinned the whole oh, Hyderabad oh, I wish, stand up? I wish, I, I wish it were so. It is not so. What I meant was that, well, Hyderabad was coming up and facilities were being produced and he chose because he could as well have been, as many other many of the major con uh, companies did earlier, he could as well have been in Bangalore. I don't think it's a very great loss to, to Bangalore. It's but no big loss. Isn't that a worry? May I intervene? Yes. I think Bangalore is going to lose out and there's no point in us being complacent. Our infrastructure is really going down the drain. We have shortages in water, we have shortages in power. The, the roads are in a sorry condition, as all the <coughs> citizens here will say and vouch for. And I think in, in uh, Andhra Pradesh, maybe he's a creation of the media, but I don't quite think so. But Chandra Babu Naidu treats businessmen with respect. They treat it club class, here they go coach class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gentleman in the blue shirt in that second last row, uh, you look like a software engineer, are you? Yeah, I'm an engineer actually. Oh, great. Let's uh, hear from you. One very important issue connected with the IT industry is the internet and we have very pathetic services here. I mean, we don't have a basic toll-free number. Places like Bombay and Delhi, which are nowhere as compared to Bangalore, have a toll-free number. And we don't have a toll-free number. And the services given by VSNL is horrible. I mean, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, if I have to you know, respond to what you're saying, you're right. You know, Bangalore has a node, VSNL has a 6 Mbps bandwidth, and Bombay and Delhi has a 16 Mbps bandwidth. That's just an accident. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> Uh, gentleman in the red shirt on the right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sir. Well, when Mr. Chandrababu Naidu can come up with a you know dozen of flyovers, why not Bangalore can't come in even a single flyover? Flyovers, hang on. We're talking about different kind of flyovers right now, the internet type. <laughs> Something on software, we're sticking to that topic, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yes in the red shirt, yeah. Sir, ap apart from the, I mean, more number of vehicles, one of the important problems that is uh, punishing Bangalore people is uh, traffic congestion because of the processions and uh, protest march being organized by religious pe people and political parties. I have one I suggestion. See, both of you are making the point that because of these kind of reasons, software companies are not coming here. It's not <laughs> becoming <laughs> a problem. That is one of the problems, and uh, I have one suggestion for that. Uh, that that's the kind of point you were making, right? That Sir, I have one suggestion traffic. for that. Excuse me. infrastructure is bad. We don't have an international airport. It would, it would facilitate business here. But this project has been dragging on and on and on, even though I think the aviation minister comes from these parts, you know. Uh, still, there's no resolution. The decision making is so poor. The, the Bangalore corporation is, you can only say, moribund, you know. They are only interested in taking trips here and trips there and uh, seeing how garbage is managed in Singapore, you know. Not how garbage is managed in Bangalore. Uh, Mahesh, you're being very silent. You live here. Yes. Is it becoming a more difficult city to live in? Is it becoming less attractive? Yes, it, it is 
unattractive as a city. Uh, where it worked was when it was a small town and growing into a larger town. Uh, it had its charm and its very first image uh, Bangalore had was pensioner's paradise. And the weather was good, everything was fine. Once we began aspiring for a mega metropolis uh, image, I think that's when things went wrong because we were hopelessly um, ill-equipped to, to deal with growth from town to... But you uh, do have this huge advantage of everybody else of a fantastic climate here. Uh, doesn't that compensate for a lot of these other problems? Uh, it does and it does not because the climate also has its drawbacks. One is that during certain seasons, if you're allergic to pollen, Bangalore can be hell. I think it has a very high percentage of uh, people suffering from bronchitis and asthma and other respiratory ailments because of, well, basically it's weeds growing wild and, you know, empty sites just full of parthenium. And the pollen content is so high in the windy season. Right. The gentleman here on the right in the blue shirt with the spectacles. Yes, um, sir. You're back to garbage and uh, back to garbage, related right. <laughs> mosquito <laughs> problem. <laughs> of the related internet mosquito type of problem. For 20 years, we have been living in Koramangala. And in fact, I have come to this program to escape from the mosquitoes, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I have some good time here. Nobody sprays any chemicals. And the only people who are doing good business for four rooms, I have four Caspers and Raid or some such thing working every night to get my sleep of six hours. You mean to say it is such a difficult problem that we cannot be controlling mosquitoes with or without garbage? <laughs> Uh, you, you know, there's an organization here, uh, Public Affairs Center. They've brought out a lot of good data on Bangalore, especially on the budget of the corporation. Uh, it was estimated that 40% of the budget of the corporation is spent on salaries. And after all other disbursements, there actually is no money left for things like spray, etc. They have the personnel, but not the spray. <laughs> So it becomes an employment organization. I, I, would, like to, I would like to react to him. Yes. It doesn't mean anything at all. Okay, let, I, me, let me just react to what you're saying. I do agree there are tremendous lot of mosquito problem in areas like Koramangala and even in the Ranagar. Basically because the tanks are polluted. And um, because in many of the tanks, the uh, sewerage water is released, untreated. And we have taken action to see that these sewerage waters are treated tertiary and secondary treatment as given, by 2002 those projects will be completed and these tanks will be cleared. Would we be sure of 2002? I would be very much alive around that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I could never live to see no mosquitoes. That's yes. very important. That's one aim of uh, the uh, lady in the, in the center here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to put this question to Mr. Mataya. Uh, now, uh, for a growing city like Bangalore, which has a population of something like 5.1 million or 51 lakhs, uh, the infrastructural facilities are pathetic. Now, the panels themselves have agreed to this. And now, one of the major problems which, is, which are faced by the citizens of Bangalore is the lack of a good and efficient means of transport. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Bangalore, now, this growing city, has a monopoly of public transport servicing few hundred bus routes with only 2,000 buses operating. And forget the 50,000 auto rickshaws which are adding to the air and uh, noise pollution. Now. Uh, it's very clear that what Bangalore needs at this stage is a multimodal mass transport system, something like what uh, Calcutta or Bombay has. That is something which we lack. Now, the state planning board has put this question or rather suggested this to the uh, Karnataka government. The government has been telling from the past, I don't know how many months or years, that it's uh, planning to build this ELRTS, uh, you know, and uh, the surface railway and the sub, uh, you know, the sub uh, way and things like that. Uh, but we've only seen the plans and not the implementation part. Now, it's very clear that if the city's uh, transport system is efficient, people are going to rely less on the private means of transport, and it's going to help uh, reduce the congestion and the pollution on the roads. Why isn't government doing anything about this? And uh, let me tell you one more thing about you. Let him just answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, carry on, answer that. Madam, I fully agree with you, because we are totally depending on the bus transport system only. But we are in the process of upgrading that system. In fact, first time... By the year 2002, we'll have... <laughs> may not be. May not be. Maybe 2002 and a half. Okay. <laughs> the plan will be ready by 2002. No, it's not. The action is on. The action is on. Because uh, mm, 
even as of now, in the last two years, we could add about 500 buses more, which was not the case earlier. First time, it is for addition plus uh, replacement. Now, a study is being done now how modern buses are to be brought in, where, uh, of course, they are supposed to be built by the, with Swedish collaboration. And um, what's going to happen is larger buses, which are eco-friendly, which are much more comfortable, uh, lower floors and wider doors, etc. Is it has been brought here and tried once. And the moment the study is completed, about 20 or so buses will be introduced on a pilot basis, so that it will be continued. Let's go back to the yes. question you wanted yeah. her to complete uh, also. Uh, yes, I'm you had sure something else to say before us. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, many people seem to be targeting you with uh, this session, but I'm sorry, but I have to just say that you said that. I mean, I'm sure you're going to justify and say that you're doing a lot of things and stuff no, like no. that. But I'm just I'm not. I'm, okay. If you're not okay, but uh, I've just uh, you know I, I just would like to go back. To you're not doing a lot of things. I'm going to understand that. Caught what caught I'm napping. not justifying. You're not justifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, about Bangalore being caught napping, I'd just like to bring to your notice at this point that Hiroshima, a city like Hiroshima, which was raised to the ground after an atomic blast. Now the, tra you know, the train system over there operates so efficiently that not a single train is laid out by 15 seconds. I would just say that this is just a lack of political will and a total apathy on the, on the part of the government. Well, he agrees with you. Uh, we'll take a short break at this point. We'll be back in just a minute to take more questions. Welcome back. This is BBC World, and you're watching Question Time India, a special issue from Bangalore. Uh, on civic issues in this city, and there are a large, large number of questions, let me tell you, in the break. Everybody wants to talk about roads, water, electricity. Uh, let's start with roads, ma'am. Uh, the lady in the green sari on the left there, yes. Sir, about the uh, lady in the green sari first. <laughs> so when you wear a green sari, you come next. Right? <laughs> oh. I want to know why Bangalore is the only city that allows such heavy traffic during the daytime, not only causing um, inconvenience to people who have to rush to work in the morning, accidents for children who run to school, and also noise pollution. And there are, and it goes through residential areas, these trucks. And I don't know why we are the only city that allows it during daytime, because I understand that all the other cities allow these big trucks to travel around in the night only. But we have it right from the morning, early morning hours, and it goes right through the day, causing a lot of inconvenience. It's a good point. Why do you allow this? As uh, perhaps as you're aware, a couple of uh, maybe a year and a half back, this was banned, and uh, ultimately there was a whole lot of agitation from the truck owners and uh, the people concerned. The government yielded. Now, why the trucks are moving within the city? Because we don't have the uh, highways and deviations. In fact, the city roads in some places are uh, overlapping with the national highways. When one stays. Um, the ring roads are completed, and ring roads will be completed in another year, year or so. I know. One second. You mean to say you don't believe what he's saying? Okay, uh, the gentleman. The gentleman who got up behind the lady in the green sari, yes sir. You, on the roads, you've got a question? Yes, go ahead. The plan is, most of the organizations that are running this, are government organizations, they are clubbed by bureaucracy. The transport is run by unions. And the corporation is done by unions. All survival of unions are controlling them. Poor people, these officers have got very little say about the matter. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> So he's found, a, he's found a good reason why you're, you're not to blame him. First of all, to answer the lady in green. For five years I've been hearing from various government officials that bus terminals are being set up outside of the city where these buses can uh, be diverted during the day and coming during the night. These have never happened. This is all the same sort of lackadaisical way of doing everything. As far as the roads are concerned, I think everybody is aware that a uh, public fund was created about 125 crore of rupees uh, 
for, for the roads. Now the uh, government then decided, the corporation decided that you would have pre-tender qualifications. The corporators, of course, objected because this was doing away with what they minded out of this. So they decided that they had a big battle in the corporation. They decided 25% should be given to the corporators. Uh, to decide. To, to decide what to do with. <laughs> now, even these so-called contractors who have uh, passed this pretender qualification then subcontract these roads to guys who are not qualified. So where are we? Back to bad roads. Right. Uh, now the gentleman in the fourth row and the white shirt uh, on the right hand side, uh, yeah, right in front here on the fourth row. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, yes. Uh, coming back to the 120 crores bond, made only for improving the roads and laying new roads. Mm -hmm. If one can go around the city, we are uh, we are not at all convinced. Even 60 crores is being spent on that. 15 percent. No, I just want to know uh, what's happened to the other 60 crores. Yeah, then. that's that, uh, maybe I, I don't want to you know, <coughs> blame the bureaucracy because again it is uh, de no, the, the decision is made by politicians. Okay, the gentleman on the left here, the gentleman on the left uh, on the fourth row. Which is, yeah, I tell you when the ask your question with the spectacles. Yeah. The no, one second, one second. Behind you. Go ahead, ask your question. We all feel that bureaucrats have not defended or. Uh, uh, taken uh, seriously these things. So they have allowed the politicians, corporators and other things to do whatever they want. Only plans, long range plans of 1000 crores, 2000 crores are there, Every which uh, does not benefit, benefit anybody. Why don't yeah. they have an ombudsman? Okay, on the left, yeah. What do you say, sir? Why don't they have an ombudsman to take care of the technical quality? Yes. The quality yeah. is lacking. Why don't they have someone uh, like an arbitrator? Okay, that's another suggestion. Now the, sec uh, the third row in the light blue shirt, yeah. Sir, Good. Yeah, Go ahead. One sir. point, sir. sir. We'll tell you when the I roads are made. When the roads are made. When Deva Gowda has to open a Devadiga Sauda, when J.H. Patel has to open some other building somewhere, only the roads till the point is made and the rest of the road is left over. Not even that. And all the roads, all the roads, all the roads are built during the daytime peak hour. At 10.30 you are going rushing to office. At 10.25 the roads are blocked because the road is being repaired or the traffic police is painting the zebra crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let me just ask Pradeep Kaur to come in at this point. There's a general feeling here that Bangalore, which to many used to be a city of private enterprise and individual uh, entrepreneurship, politicians have sent, seem to have descended on the city. They always see a good thing when there, you know, when there is one. And he, as he says, one politician or the other comes, only then roads are made. This, you're making Bangalore like Delhi. All the roads are good where the politician lives. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess being, I, one second, let him answer this question. I guess being a Bangalore and I agree to many of the issues that the floor is saying and, and, and coming back to the question therefore, how will Bangalore continue to be the Silicon Valley? I guess it's relative. There are multiple elements that go into why Bangalore will continue for some more time to be the Silicon Valley. Entertainment, education, areas of spouses. If you see the business world survey of February, they say spouses, where do spouse, spouses like to work in which city? And if you look at the percentages, percentages of the survey, 54% said Bangalore is number one, 11% says Hyderabad. So it's all relative. So could on an absolute basis, I, I know all these issues, I agree completely. So could it be that Bangalore is deteriorating, but the rest of India is getting even worse? No, I'm not so saying. Is that what you're going to say? No, I'm not saying. I'm, I, I think relatively, you're doing okay. No, from a technological yeah, standpoint. Point to be noted, sir. I'm, I'm absolutely. Okay, back to I, I, back I to. agree with Mr. Pradeep Kar that it could be a subjective issue. But Bangalore, we don't want Bangalore to be what the other cities are. Correct. Correct. And yes, right. I think that's a, yeah, Correct. Uh, Correct. let yeah. Mr. Mathai react to this. I think that's a key thing. The audience clearly doesn't want Bangalore to be like the rest of India is. One second, let him answer. One second. Excuse me. Uh, I'd like to respond to what Mr. Kaur just said. He said yeah, that yeah, but let Mr. Mathai speak first. Just a second. Oh. Just a second. <laughs> the government is committed that uh, Bangalore should not deteriorate like other places and the steep decline about which all of you are concerned should be stopped. Well, certain opinions have been um, expressed here. I will not be able to react about that. It's a complete turnaround in Calcutta. Yeah. Calcutta. Sorry, let him answer. You've said it a bit. Now let him answer. But yes. The, Don't after how long? After what all has happened there? After all, we have all been watching Cal Calcutta also. Within a short span it was happening. I think we are on a platform from which we will take off, whether it is the roads within, 
wherever all the uh, ring road or whatever it is, the funds are deployed. Take for off in uh, uh, which direction? Take off. What do you want? <laughs> what do you which want? way are you going to take off? What do you want? Okay, uh, the lady who I into, uh, yes ma'am, you have to, uh, the, oh, in the oh, brown, please. the lady in the center in the brown, yes. Uh, I'm just uh, responding to what Mr. Carr said, that many people voted that Bangalore, they would like to shift to Bangalore. I just like to say that even we thought that only, that Bangalore is the garden city, but we have come here about 10 months back, we are, we are still searching for the gardens. <laughs> Let's take the lady on the right, on the second last row, who's been dying to ask the question for a long time, yes. I have two points to make. One is a comment on what Mr. Datani said, that uh, because of the pollen in the air and the climate, that people are suffering from bronchitis and uh, asthma. I think today they're suffering more from bronchitis and asthma because of the pollution levels in Bangalore, not only the pollen. And another comment I want to say, that it seems that all these issues that if at all being addressed by the urban development or the corporation or, who, or the garbage problem or the roads problem seems to be all being done on a piecemeal basis. There doesn't seem to be a comprehensive master plan for the city of Bangalore. Whatever there is in the uh, comprehensive development plan which is there for 2011 is just a very physical plan. It doesn't seem to be addressing the environmental issues or the garbage issues or all the other issues which we've already discussed so far. And also Mr. Um, Matthias talked about uh, Bangalore sleeping when the boom took place. Are we still doing the same thing or are we going to do something about it? He says you're woken up, it'll be fine by 2002, don't worry. <laughs> uh, the gentleman uh, in the third row here with the check shirt, yes sir. Yeah, the real reason why Bangalore roads are bad today, in spite of issue bombs and other things, is there is no quality monitoring of this. Most of the money is eaten away and not used for road construction. I am president of an NGO organization. As a technical man, I have seen where they should put one inch to six inches jelly, they will put half inch and still the bill is passed and they are happy. Next day, the road is out. Right. Okay, now let's move on from roads to uh, some other issue. This lady, one second, the lady in the center here. Yes, uh, in the third row, yes, go ahead. One second, sir. You're not a lady in the center. Just one second. Um, I guess we've already established uh, the fact that, you know, I mean, we, we just cannot, uh, we don't have the infrastructure right now to support a lot of what we, we're hoping that. What I'm trying to say is, I guess that um, we are so concerned about Hyderabad taking away a portion of our computer industry, we can't really afford to be, because I don't think we have the infrastructure to support it. Now, we've already established that. That brings me to the KEB, the Karnataka Electricity Board. Um, electricity? I've been, yes. I've been living in Bangalore for probably all my life, uh, from time to time, <coughs> and uh, I've been seeing the power cuts, you know, a, a gust of breeze, I can't even say a gust, I mean the slightest breeze, it's gone, the electricity is gone, and it takes forever to like, you know, get it up again, and then it's gone again. And with this kind of, uh, you know, situation in the electricity, how, how can we possibly hope to, you know, sustain a huge booming computer industry? Hyderabad, I've lived there too, and it's got, I mean, it, it has much, much better facilities than we do. And I want to know what, are, what we are going to do with uh, the KB, particularly. Let me bring Nomita in here, that it, all these problems, roads, electricity, Part of it seems to, everybody seems to believe there's corruption, leakage, and you're also saying, now getting on to electricity. What are your constructive suggestions? Let's move on to the, how do we solve these problems? As far as electricity is concerned, I think uh, there's 4,800 megawatts capacity installed. They're looking to, uh, by the year 2007, for 9,355 megawatts. It's going to cost 30,000 crore. I'm interested to know whether they're going, where they're going to get this money from. Cur currently, the problems are, uh, there are a lot of unofficial connections. Uh, we have a women's center, for instance, which was moved into a locality where with KB poles everywhere, there wasn't one single legitimate connection. Just for the viewers, KB is Karnataka Electricity Board. Yes, yes. yes. There's also huge transmission losses. Uh, there are problems, I, I think, with the kind of equipment they have. I think before they think of huge mega uh, power projects, 
first put your house in order. All these things need to be straightened out. Right. Let me ask Mahesh, you've traveled around the country, you've lived, you've uh, have your plays in various cities, you've seen what facilities are there are like. We've got an irate audience. Are they justified? Is Bangalore worse than other cities or are they actually quite lucky it's better than other cities? Well, I disagree that Bangalore is worse than other cities. But as you had pointed out, that's no consolation. It, you can't say that, you know, we're not as badly off as other cities in, in terms of, uh, you know. <laughs> Delhi, for instance, has major problems with its uh, electrical equipment, with fires and things. And yes, we do have the same concerns with our antiquated equipment and transformers, which blow up with, you know, a slight breeze. And these are real concerns. So you think the real concern is that Bangalore used to be much better. It's declining towards the problems of the rest of the country. That's the concern. I think it just can't cope with this new image of being because a mega there's no metropolis. Planning. There's no planning, whatever. What is the real concern? He says things are in Bangalore are not as bad as other cities. What is, let's have the perspective. Is it that it's declining? People are worried that it's declining like the rest of the country? Let, uh, let me tell you my view. Or again, if you talk about power, you know, there are multiple issues. One is the political issue. The, the current generation is around 3,500 to 4,000 megawatts. The requirement uh, that we have is around 6,500. City of Bangalore requires 1,500 uh, megawatts. But the real issue is twofold. One is transmission losses, which I believe has dropped from 22 to 18 percent. The fundamental issue is the government insists, and this may be a national issue, that 50 percent subsidy needs to be given to all irrigation and irrigation pump sets, which means when KB has to give that subsidy, for which it does not get compensated by the government, where does it get some money from? That's number one. That's a national issue, and it's a government state issue. The second uh, fundamental issue is Bangalore, historically, uh, the entire power generation in Bangalore is hydel, its power is water dependent. Therefore, uh, and that's the second issue, and therefore when you have bad monsoons, you have silting happening in the water areas, you don't have adequate water collections. And the third in my mind, which is the fundamental issue, is the population of Bangalore in the last 10, 12 years has moved from 2.1 million to 5.5 million, or 5.2. The city and the state have not thought of adequately what does it take to support the new generation and the population influx. And therefore, it's inadequately coping with the growth of the city. So when you say inadequacy, you must look at what is happening in the process, how many industries are being set up. And the issue is that if they don't do much, they will go somewhere else. So rather than looking at this growth of population as an opportunity, uh, as Mr. Yeah. Mathai said, we were caught napping, Bangalore was caught napping, it hasn't woken up yet. We'll take a short break now and I'm back in just a moment to take lots more questions. See you then. <laughs> Welcome back. We have lots of questions and some suggestions, I believe. Let's go to the gentleman in the second row who promises he has a suggestion uh, for you, sir. Sir, time and again we are being hearing there is paucity of funds in all the government departments because it is this Karnataka is heavily taxed on each and everything. I would like to give two more suggestions to government people that let them put tax on one on laughing, which we are forced to laugh. <laughs> Second, let them provide us some meters so that they tax us the, on, on oxygen which we breathe. That's how I think they will complete this. All the implements on the roads, they, which they are not doing, always they give the answer that they have no funds. Right, uh, rather unique suggestion. There's a question from Nalini Ramanna, just to change the topic a bit. Nalini Ramanna, where are you? No, I only want yes, to ask. Yes, ma'am, your question. So many of the eminent personalities of Bangalore have joined hands with the citizens of Bangalore like us in all this hue and cry, yet it has made no impact on the decision makers. We have eminent personalities joining hands with us, whether it's Karnad or Datani or Mr. Ka, anybody, name them. Still, there's no impact. All the assurances are on paper. We are doing it. We will look into it. Meanwhile, maybe I would say with the concurrence of the bureaucracy, who are the policy makers who help in decisions? They're just going ahead with whatever they want to do, neglecting public opinion. Absolutely. Deepka, this is, I think this is a worrying factor. I've, I've never been more impressed by the concern of the average ba uh, citizen as in Bangalore and by the number of personalities that are involved in making this a better city. But nobody's listening to you. That's the worry she's uh, voicing. Yes, 
we have taken cognizance of it. But in reality, we see no results. Why aren't they listening to you? No, I guess, you know, I have to uh, humbly submit that these issues that uh, she's saying are very valid. And uh, the only element that the way I look at it, there's some element of practicality which is involved. But the issue is that government must force themselves to be accountable to the citizens to improve quality of life. They must be accountable to all the issues that we're facing here. Right. But they're not. They're not. The government officials Sir? also have a say in the decision of the politicians. That is what I know. I think Mr. Mathai is very silent yeah, because he, he tends to agree with everything you're no, saying. I, <laughs> I, I, I cannot, I cannot no, disagree. I, I cannot disagree. And I, I feel it is an intense public feeling and the manner in which it is being expressed by all of you and the and eminent people and, and the large public here, which has put us back onto track many a time. I mean, it, it's not correct to say nothing is happening. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, uh, one second, let's uh, the young lady in the center, the center there, yes, you've got a question, ma'am. One second, you're not a young lady. Going back to the funds. I would like to say that when uh, Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee came to Bangalore to inaugurate the IT.com, BangaloreIT.com, around 100 crores were spent just for painting the footpath. <laughs> so, I mean, funds are going a waste. I mean, they are not the places where they have to be. So, what do you think? Isn't, I mean, we people are uh, paying up taxes only, to, I mean, only for the funds to go a waste like this? Right. Come on, it is for yeah, 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 please. Uh, the corporation budget, it hasn't been audited since 1995. <laughs> What kind of fiscal management is there as far as the Bangalore City Corporation is concerned? I think till we have the right information that you can go there, you can get the information you need and make public officials accountable, we will never have change. Quickly, you're running out of time. The gentleman in the suit there, yes. Uh, the third on the left, yeah, in the front. Colonel Roy. Yes, sir. Well, I'm proud to be a Bangalorean in spite of uh, listening to all this mess that we are in. But I think what we have to realize is that not what the government can do for us, but what we can do for ourselves. Because it's high time. It is high time that we believe that self-help is the best help. And being a member of an NGO, I think we have proved that we can do a lot of things without the government's help. And I think we need to take the initiative to improve things to make life better over here. We don't have to wait for something like what happened in Surat to happen to Bangalore to improve our garbage disposal. I think it is we citizens who are responsible to dispose of our garbage properly. At the same time, what I request from the government is that for them to empower resident welfare associations to at least act actively and efficiently, something which they are not able to okay, do. Okay, how many of you believe forget the government, do it yourself now? <laughs> well, that's about 90%. How many of you want to sit back? How many of you want to sit back and let the government do it? One person, two people. No, I, I think government would be very happy if uh, citizens took over. They, they need to do nothing. They can collect the taxes and citizens do all the work. <laughs> right, I'm afraid we've completely run out of time now. Uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you all for joining us from this beautiful garden city. It's still actually a beautiful city if you come here. Uh, but you've got very, very concerned citizens. Do join us again next week at...